Hello YouTube, so I thought I would make a, a quick video about this Dell laptop right here. So this, as you may recall, is the laptop that had the broken hinge. Maybe you could see it right here. And I fixed it using epoxy. So, one thing about this laptop is it's a Dell Vostro 1500. Uh, it had Windows 7 installed on it originally, but I am going to be installing Windows 10 on it. Uh, the uh, the disk drive on this thing does not work. Yeah, it just grinds the disk. So when I tried to install Windows using the disk, it didn't work. But now that I have it on the USB drive, I think I can install it. So nice thing, nice thing about Windows is you don't really need the product key. So I could just get straight past that. And we can choose which Windows we want. Uh, this is a seller. This is a Intel Celera on M. Uh, architecture of Windows is 64-bit. Uh, so I think this must be 64-bit. Uh, the Celera on M. This computer was released in 2009, so it should be 64-bit. But I don't know which Celerons are and are not 64-bit. I think the well, for uh, mobile chips at least. I, I know the uh, Celeron D was one of the last 32-bit ones. But it looks like it's running just fine on 64-bit. Uh, let's say Windows 10 Pro. Let's see if it doesn't give an error about the architecture. If we gone in this far. Yeah, so I guess it is a 64-bit. So this computer... It doesn't have a lot of RAM. Uh, it has, I think, one gigabyte, like uh, two 512 sticks of DDR2. What I'm gonna do is, I have some more one gig sticks, so I can probably get this thing up to two gigabytes, and it'll be faster with DDR2. Uh, as you can see right here, the hard drive is 150 gigabytes, about uh, total size, free space. Uh, so yeah, this was the original Windows 7. It had a Windows 7 starter, which is kind of weird. This It's designed for Windows XP. Uh, so let's just delete this. Let's hope it doesn't give an error about this. Yeah, so unallow good space. Okay, let's apply. Okay, it might create additional system files. So yeah, this is probably going to be the oldest computer that I've managed to get Windows 10 on. Yeah. So, yeah, it looks like it's just gonna do that. Yeah, so this laptop, it doesn't have a battery uh, at all. The hinge was broken when I got it. The DV drive, D drive does not work. It has a VGA port, ethernet. I think there's an S video on the back. Around on this side, uh, you have a card, a PC, PC MCI, you have a PC MCI card, uh, audio ports, uh, I think that's Wi-Fi or something. Yeah, so, oh look, we're at 3%. So this is actually going pretty fast. So, if I can install Windows 10 on this, and it's decently fast enough once I upgrade the RAM. It should be a pretty a pretty decent computer. I mean, it's from 2009. It's it's old, but I don't think it's going to be that bad. It's kind of weird how it's from 2009. It's those Windows XP. Uh, what reminds me is the fact that uh, a lot of people didn't want to get Windows 10. Uh, not, not Windows 10. A lot of people did did not want to get Windows Vista when it came out around 2006, late 2006, 2007. Uh, it was uh, because Windows Vista had a lot of bugs in it. It also had a much greater hardware requirement, especially at the time, than Windows XP did. So a lot of manufacturers kept with Windows, Windows XP and just installed Windows XP on their computers which I guess Dell did. Uh, 
Yeah, Windows XP was an option on these computers. You could also get Windows Vista. I believe these computers later came installed with Windows 7, maybe. Uh, 2009 is when Windows 7 came out, so it is possible. But, uh, so, Windows 10 really doesn't have that much more of a requirement for specifications than Windows Vista does. Uh, uh, so it should install just fine. Windows XP, though, will install on basically anything. It, it only... You can install Windows XP with uh, 64 megs of RAM if you really wanted to. It wouldn't run that well, but it would install. Uh, this computer, however, is fairly modern enough. It has a, a SATA, uh, SATA hard drive, which means you could get a modern SSD and put it in there. This is probably going to be SATA 2, not SATA 3 or any of the newer standards. Uh, see if your trackpad. This, yeah, the trackpad works. I believe the the keyboard works just fine. I, I've had this computer in storage, so I'm not exactly familiar with what's with what its problems and features are. But just look at that. In the time we've been talking, it's already up to 19%. So I'll come back when it's fully installed, and we'll see where we've got it. Looks like we're just about done. It, it's finished installing everything, so now it's going to restart. So we're, we're going to boot off of the internal hard drive and not off of the DVD drive, or the, the USB drive. So if this works properly, yes, it is going into Windows 10. We are booting up. So I have finished installing Windows 10 on this computer, and we've just we've just gotten to the desktop, and it is the computer is busy installing updates. It just installed a graphics driver, so now we get full resolution. Uh, presumably, it's still doing other stuff. So yeah, let's just go over the specs of this computer. Uh, it's a Celeron 540, 1.86 gigahertz. It's a single core processor. Uh, it has one of one gigabyte of RAM, uh, just as I thought. Which and it has a 64 gigabyte, uh, and it has a 64 bit operating system, 64 bit processor. So this is kind of odd. It's a 64 bit though. It's a single core. Uh, does it say the clock speed? Yeah, 1.86 gigahertz. So it's kind of slow. Even for these uh, mobile processors, it is on the slower end as it is a Celeron processor. What I'm thinking about doing actually is is upgrading this computer to a Core 2 Duo. Uh, I'll explain more about that later, but. Uh, yeah, but one thing that I can definitely upgrade right now is the RAM. And if we take a look at the task manager, you could see what it's using. So keep in mind, this computer is just doing background tasks right now. It's probably installing updates, but it's not doing all that much. And the memory is basically maxed out at 9, 920 out of one. 920 megs out of one gigabyte. So it's basically just stayed maxed out all the time. So uh, once I can get uh, one and a half or, or two gigabytes in this computer, it'll probably be much faster and run much better. Uh, the CPU is all over the place. Uh, yeah, it's even though it's a slow CPU, it can. It's not maxing out all the way, even though it probably is doing a lot of background tasks right now, just installing updates, basically. But yeah, so uh, the disk is also going at 100%, so it's, it's probably doing something on the disk right now. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wait a while until this uh, this computer has got uh, everything going on it, and then I'll I'll open it up and upgrade the RAM, and then we'll talk about uh, possibly getting this computer a better processor. All right, so we have this computer open now, and I'm going to upgrade the RAM. As you can see, both RAM slots of this computer are populated. The one here right now has a 512 megabyte uh, DDR2 DIMM installed in it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that with a 1 gigabyte DDR2 stick that I found lying around. So overall, replacing the RAM should give us one and a half gigabytes installed as there's another 512 megabyte module installed in the inside of the computer but right now as you can see I'm upgrading it I don't want to take the entire computer apart which you would have to do to get the, to that other module so right now you can see that RAM stick is inside and we could just screw it back into place and the computer should be faster with that RAM stick Okay, so this is just an addendum to the video that you just saw. Uh, the previous parts of the video that you saw I made a few months ago. That was in April, now it is August. And I have tested the computer a bit more. And basically immediately after filming that video, the hinge of the computer broke again. And when I was testing it, though it had more RAM, even in Windows 10 with 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, it still wasn't enough. Windows 10 just wants more RAM. I think for Windows 10, it really needs 4 gigabytes after, after the test I've done so far. 1.5 one, one gigabytes just really isn't enough. So what I basically did is I went on eBay and I bought a similar computer. It's the exact same model, a Dell Vostro 1500 computer laptop and what I got that computer for is one it has a working hinge and two it may have some better hardware that, that I could scavenge from maybe I could swap out the RAM so it could have like up to two gigabytes maybe it might have a better processor or more hard drive space but it, like I said, it, it was mostly just for the hinge, so I could have it working. Uh, that laptop, though, it is a non-working unit. I bought it for only $10, so I, I think it was worth it. Maybe I... Or maybe I, I shouldn't have spent that much money for what amounts to a 11-year-old laptop, but I, I, I think that's, it was worth the $10 just to see what hardware that I could get from it. So I have that computer with me right now. And eventually what I want to do is to combine those two together, make a better computer, and see if that works better. But I don't think I could really get away with Windows 10 on it. It, it was an interesting experiment to see if that computer could run Windows 10, but after that, I think I'm going to try to install Linux on this laptop. It might be better if it's like a lightweight version of Linux, and that and that and that laptop could just be my Linux laptop if it can run whatever distribution well. I uh, I'm not really sure at this point what I want to do with it. I, I could also install Windows XP on it. I could have a Windows XP laptop that's fairly fast, given its hardware and vintage of 2009. Uh, that might be interesting as well, but I'm not sure what I would be doing with Windows XP. So just stay tuned for a future video that I will make about this laptop, and we're going to upgrade it further and choose what operating system we can install on it. See you then.